Okay, another type of problem we can do with rational equations is instead of doing a work problem, we can do one of these where they've actually given us an equation and they've given us some information on how to analyze or substitute into that equation. We can do that with all kinds of different equations. In this case, we're gonna do it with a rational equation that has a variable in the denominator. So uh, the key to these problems is just to read carefully. It tells you that the cost per ton is C, and then they tell you that the X variable stands for thousands of tons. So when it says, what is the cost? It's basically saying, I'm looking for C, what does C equal? And when it says 30,000 tons, that lets you know X is gonna be equal to 30. So basically all I have to do here is plug in a value of X equals 30 into this equation to figure out what C is, and that'll give me my answer for part A. Now, I've already uh, taken the time to set this equation up in Desmos. And I have two options. I can either replace the X with 30 directly, just like that, and it would give me a cost of 477 per ton. So uh, 477 per ton. Or the other way you could do this is I could uh, type it in as C of X equals and have the whole equation there. And then I could type in, in a second line, C of 30, where I substitute in the 30, and it gives me an answer of 477. Now, for the next part of this one, uh, what I need to do is I need to find out how many thousands of tons was the platform. So in this case, when it's asking for how many thousand tons, it's asking for what is X. So X stands for thousand tons, and it says the cost is 483. That means cost is 483. So it's going to be a similar thing, but this time I'm replacing the C of X with 483. So I would have 483 equals uh, 32,500 over X plus 625. And one way I could solve that one is I could just um, write that as 483 over 1, cross multiply, and solve that way, where I would have 483 times X plus 625 equals 31,000, sorry, the 312,500. That would be fine. I'm going to show you how to do it with Desmos, though. I already have this equation typed in, and this time I'm looking for a value where C of X is equal to, uh, let's see, it was 400 and... 83. So I have two different equations, and it's kind of angry. Uh, well, I'm going to zoom out and see if I can find anything. That should have been 483, sorry. Okay, neither equation is graphing because it doesn't like the fact I call them both C of X. And uh, what I could do there to solve that is I could just, instead of calling this one C of X equals, I can just call it a Y equals. So I have an equation there, an equation there, and if I zoom out enough, I should be able to see some kind of a graph. And you can see I see a graph and in this case, I'm looking for where this equation is equal to 483. So I'm looking for the intersection of the two things. That is one way I can solve it. Another way I could solve it is remember, I can always solve an equation by, uh, and 21 would, 0.9 would be your answer. Another way I can solve it is remember, I could always solve an equation by saying I can take that equation, and if it's supposed to equal 293, I can do that minus the 4. 93, let me just double check, make sure I'm remembering my number correctly. I'm sorry, it was 483. And then I'm looking for this value here, which is the same 21.998. Personally, I kind of like the second way better because it's saying, hey, I can take this equation, subtract the value I need to get everything on one side. So I have C of X minus 483. And since it now equals zero, I would be looking for my zero value. It's a little bit easier to see because I would not have even had to zoom out as much to get it. Still would have had to zoom out a little bit, but not nearly as far as I did the first time.